Most interesting thing in tech, I want to talk about the biggest issue in technology, which is the question about why, over the last generation, it seemed as though digital technology empowered authoritarians more than democracies. At the end of the Cold War, everybody thought that the internet and digital technology would help democracies, and that doesn't seem to have happened. Obviously, the rise of authoritarian states and dictators and decline of some democracies is not wholly or even largely or even mostly a story of technology. There are other factors, like the Iraq War, etc. But to the extent it is a story of technology, I've been talking to a bunch of people about it recently, and I think there are four very important factors. If I were to rank them, number one, the speed at which information flows. During the Cold War, there was an assumption that more information would likely lead to more democracy, and that was true in, say, Czechoslovakia in 1985. But when you get to the United States in, say, 2016, the speed of information overwhelmed us, and the way that it led to social media sorting algorithms overwhelmed some of the ways our democracy works. So that's reason number one, too much information. Reason number two is that at the end of the Cold War and in those early wonderful years, the 1990s, it seemed like it would be impossible for authoritarian states to control technology. As Bill Clinton famously said, China trying to censor the internet is like trying to nail jello to the wall. Well, they nailed that jello pretty effectively. Third reason, income inequality. Societies with more income inequality have a harder time sustaining democracies. And it turned out that this technology, counter to what many people thought 25 years ago, led to income inequality getting worse because it concentrated power in people with graduate degrees, college degrees, urban areas, a small number of companies. It led to a widening of income inequality, certainly in large democratic countries. And then the fourth reason was the weakening of the press. What happened is Facebook and Google built a better advertising model. In the year 2000, if you wanted to sell golf balls, you put an ad in Golf Magazine. Now, if you want to sell golf balls, you just target to somebody on Facebook who has joined a golf club. They built a better way of selling advertising, and some media companies, like The Atlantic, with live events and other things, have been able to succeed financially, but it has been very hard. Okay, so now here's the big question. In the age of AI, what happens to those four factors? And those, I think, are some of the biggest questions we have to face. And it's not clear. It is possible on the first one, the overwhelming amount of information, that as I talked about yesterday, with AI able to counter conspiracy theories, maybe AI will actually be helpful. Maybe it will make it much worse, because you won't know whether you're talking to a bot or a human. But it is possible that discourse works better. Maybe in an age of AI, it is harder for totalitarian states to control their people. And it's very interesting that one of the reasons why these generative AI models appeared here was because China was so scared of them. Maybe there is a counterweight in AI to the centralizing tendencies of technology and dictatorships. With income inequality, the signs are pretty good at the beginning, that AI is actually a tool that is really helpful for people who are making less, and in fact, more helpful than for people who are making more. Many of the early economic studies suggest that it could have the opposite effect of the last digital revolution. And on the news media, God willing, we'll be able to use it effectively and as a great tool. So my hope is that unlike the last era of technology, this next one is one that empowers democracy more than authoritarianism. And that's the most interesting thing in tech.